and that brings this back down to zero. So if I go back to my balance sheet, let's extend the dates up here to go to 03, uh, 3123, run it. So we got the side by side for three months, which is super cool that we can do that. And then if I scroll down, now we've got everything correct as of the cutoff date. This is where we want to report everything. And then we reversed it as of March, right? As of the 1st of March. So if I go into it and we look at the look at the detail, if I go into this, I'm going to change the range back to 010123, running it. And then so now I, I made it correct as of the as of the cutoff and then reversed it the day after the cutoff. And so now it's back on down to zero. Why did you do that? Because it's a timing difference and we wanted to make it right as of the cutoff. Isn't 72 a small dollar amount? Does it matter? Yes, it's probably immaterial, but you can imagine a situation where it would be material and relevant to decision making and the concept would remain the same. Let's go to the tab to the right and then uh, do this again. Let's extend this out to 03, uh, 03, uh, 3123 run it so same concept happened down here we did we added it to interest and then we've got this negative amount here so notice in the year to date because we did it in the month it didn't make interest negative but for the month of march i have a negative amount in interest meaning interest went down that doesn't make sense typically why would we do that let's go let's go into it and, and say, okay, if I go into this and let's change this from 010123. So now we've got, we've got, we've made it right as of 228, the cutoff date, and then we reversed it. But this reversal means that when I run a profit and loss just for March, I, I end up with a negative expense, which doesn't look right, but it will be right when the bookkeeper records their transaction which we saw will be this according to the normal amortization schedule, which will record this amount to interest expense and the amount that properly should be recorded to interest expense in the current time frame is this amount, half of that. So this will net out against, against this and it'll be correct. So that's, that's the point. And it'll be not only correct, it'll be easy for the bookkeeper because the accounting department can do what they do. They don't have to mess with my reversing entry. It'll still be correct as of the date that they make that transaction, which in this case looks like it'll be on 315. Then you might ask, why then don't I enter this as of 315 so that it'll be more correct for the 15 days of March and it'll match up to the date that they enter the transaction and, and match up at that point because I don't want my reversing entries scattered across the month because I'm sacrificing the fact that the financial statements will not be precisely correct in the middle of the month in order to make things easy between me and the accounting department, the adjusting in the accounting department and, and, uh, and so that they can automate their systems, right? So that's the idea. So, so we're, we're going to sacrifice the idea that it's not going to be perfect for the entire time frame. It's going to be perfect periodically or as close to perfect as we can be so that we can make the accounting system as easy as possible and then just make the adjustments that are necessary in order to make the accounting system go as easy and automated as possible. Okay, enough of, of that. So now that's it then. Let's take a look at our, our reports. So I'm gonna go to the tab to the right and uh, duplicate it. And then let's look at our journal entry rep reports because now we can look at the adjusting and reversing entries. So I go down to my reports on the left. I'm gonna type in journal report, journal, journal, and then close the boogie. So then let's let's say that I wanna do this for the cutoff date, 0228.23, 0228.23. And then I'm gonna filter it by journal entries. Filtering, customize, filter by transaction type, journal run it and so there we have it there's our adjusting entry these other two we could still filter those out by exporting to excel and get rid of them but there's our adjusting entry let's look at the reversing entry which will reverse that as of the first day of the next time frame the next period three one and there's the reversing entry boom 